Hello, this is Matthew Miller from the ZDNet Smartphones and Cell Phones blog. Today we're going to take a walk around, at least initial look, at the T-Mobile G2, which you see uh, this retail box here. The G2 is the new um, replacement for the G1, I guess, which was one of my favorite Android phones back in the day on the first launch. It was actually the first retail Android phone. And now we have the G2 with Google. It's a Google phone without the HTC Sense. It is made by HTC. And the uh, the big selling point of the G2 is that it now has HSPA+. Plus, so it supports the fastest network, um, fastest 3G network in the U.S. And uh, T-Mobile is actually now advertising it as a 4G network because uh, I think the theoretical speeds are upwards of uh, 12 megabytes per second. Um, on this particular device, HSPA+, Plus, I believe, goes up to 20. So uh, I don't have, I'm not in a good zone here to test the speeds on this particular video. However, I will test it um, as I dive into it. Right now, this is just a first impression. I just, I just picked up the device on Friday. Um, I did not buy it yet. Uh, this is a review device. I was going to buy it until I heard that uh, Windows Phone 7 was coming out, and uh, I'm not. Since I do have an Evo 4G, which I, I love, uh, I'm not going to buy a G2, I don't think, yet. However, we'll see after more usage how that turns out to work because the, the Evo, while it is a good device, I really do like this too. So um, let's take a look at the device on the hardware side of it, right? So we have a fairly standard uh, 3.7 inch display similar to the, um, the one that we saw on the Nexus One. And then we have capacitive buttons on the bottom here and it's in the order of home, menu, back, and search. We have a touch sensitive directional pad down here that also has a uh, push button action button as well see and we have this nice uh, soft touch on the bottom and then it has this uh, brushed aluminum look around the outside and if we come over here on the right side we see there's a physical camera button which is awesome I love that um, really helps to take pictures I believe rather than having uh, just touch screen only and then we have uh, this little button here is actually a battery release that I'll show you in a second on the bottom, there's uh, the microphone opening there. And then uh, really nothing else on the bottom. Over on the side, on the left side now, we have a micro USB port and a large uh, volume rocker there. And then on top, we have the 3.5mm headset jack and the power button. And then swinging around in the back, we have a really nice back. Actually, this is a back panel that I'll show you in a second. It removes. It's a brushed aluminum feel to it. Um, maybe it's steel, I don't know, it's brushed metal and um, has G2 embedded in it and HTC on the bottom that says with Google and this is soft touch around it. It really just feels fabulous in your hand. You really need to go to a store and hold this because it's just a, the device is just feels great in your hand. There's a 5 megapixel with an LED flash. So this button over here is the, uh, is the back release mechanism as you can see there. So that part of the back comes off. You got the battery and the um, SIM card there. And the micro U, micro USB, or the micro SD card. I'm believing uh, there it is. Micro SD. Oh yes, that's the one that's uh, below the battery, and not as easily removed. Okay, so let's put that back together. It snaps in and start it up. So the other part of the hardware, right, is the uh, the keyboard. Okay, now the keyboard. Watch the uh, watch the mechanism here as I start to tilt it up. So you you uh, you press with your two thumbs, right, and it kind of slides up, and then slides on top, right. So let's see the side there. So what you'll see is you'll see that it slides up, and then kind of comes back down on itself with the two hinges there, and so it's resting pretty much almost flush of where it was before. Okay, and that is compared to something like the Touch Pro 2, right? which is a more traditional QWERTY slider keyboard, we slide that and we just slide it straight up, right? See how there's the elevation difference there? And then over here on the uh, on the G2, we see there's not really that elevation. It comes back down up on top of itself. So it uh, just kind of gives you a different experience. And uh, looking at the keyboard itself, we see it is a very nice keyboard. It's, uh, it's quite wide. Uh, the keys have kind of the soft touch on there. There's uh, four rows, as you can see, so the numbers are um, alternate keys. There's a .com and a www button, which is nice, an at key, 
uh, period and comma is dedicated, the question mark is dedicated. I like this even better than a Blackberry keyboard because the key punctuations, uh, the key punctuation pieces are capitalized or are dedicated buttons, right? And that I don't even see on a Blackberry. A nice thing I see here is we have a pretty good sized space bar and we have two shifts, right? We have a right and a left shift, which is handy. Right and a left alternate key as well. And then we have these three uh, silver buttons. These are programmable, right? So I program it to uh, different email accounts and then I have Twitter on one of them. Fortunately, Twitter, this Twitter client is not in landscape. I'll have to check on that. I thought it was. Oh, okay, it is when you click into it, just not the launch screen. So these three buttons are you know, fully customizable to whatever you want. Rather than having all the other ones short shortcut launch keys, these three are selected uh, for that. And then if you compare that keyboard to something like the, the Touch Pro 2, which in my opinion was one of the was one of the best keyboards because as you can see the Touch Pro 2 had a five row with a dedicated number row. And it really was a nice keyboard when you're looking at QWERTY devices. It's just that the operating system was a bit long in the tooth. But uh, so this keyboard is very nice. You know, that's what my test is going to be. Um, if I need, if I go back and decide that uh, I do like the keyboard, I may have to go back for the G2. Uh, I sure would like one. Now, there's been some talk about the, the hinge being loose and things like that. Now, the only way that I've been able to get this thing to uh, release and, and slide down is not even upside down, right? So I have to hold it very specifically around... No, I can barely do this because you can the cur the the edges are rounded, right? So the only way I can do this is if I hold very carefully, which is not easy for me, on the just the rounded so just the rounded parts with my fingers, and if I go like that, it'll slide down, right? And then it, it, it then you can see there's the hinge, right? So if you go up and then if you just hold it by that, it will pop down, right? But the thing is, how in the world would I ever be able to hold it upside down and look at my phone? I, it, it, it's very difficult to do, and I don't see it as a design flaw. I mean, if anybody's holding their device regularly on those rounded edges and letting it fall down, upside down, if they've got another problem rather than just the screen coming down. So, as you can see, it's a nice design. It feels very solid. I, I don't see that being a problem, and I think people are making more out of it than it actually is, and that's why I didn't want to prejudge it. Um, before I actually had a chance to test it out myself, and I'm pretty happy with it. So here we go back to the operating system, right? Now we see that this is a Android 2.2 device, Froyo, with uh, with no HTC specific sense or anything like that. So we have the uh, the phone button, the application launcher, the internet browser. We see there are seven screens. If we were to slide, right? There are some HTC utilities. There's Facebook and Twitter. Uh, it is preloaded with a lot of the Google apps, right? like Listen and Earth and Maps, uh, Google Talk, Google Voice is preloaded. Um, it does have exchange support for exchange uh, email, calendar contacts, um, the market of course, has some other applications like Photo. Let's dive into the whole list of applications. We've come up here. Some of these I have loaded myself obviously. Angry Birds is one of them. Amazon MP3 is in there. I put on Evernote. See the T-Mobile My Account stuff. We've got Photo Bucket. There's the quick keys utility, oh. Twitter, Skype. So as you can see, typical Android with a bunch of uh, applications. So it's a vanilla Android, which means also like the Nexus One, it should see uh, upgrades fairly regularly and, and more often than, uh, than some others, right? So let me see, HSPA Plus was the big thing, loaded up. I'm trying to think of this. Anything else that stands out about this particular device? Oh yeah, so integrated, right? It has four gigabytes internal memory with uh, an eight gigabyte micro card. Now that's one thing I didn't check yet. Let's go into the settings and see how much memory we actually have. I heard it was advertised as four gigabytes, but there was uh, a lot less than that. So let's see what we got. So available space internal 1.15 gigs. Um, I don't know how much is loaded on that with uh, with some apps and things like that, but from what I understand, it's it says four gigs, but it's really it's really about uh, less than two gigs that is accessible because of what is loaded up by default, right? Maybe we can take off some of those and and customize that later. I'm not sure. Um, however, if you're just using it for internal app storage and not so much for um, video and memory and or video and photos and and other media stuff, the two gigabytes may be more than adequate, especially when you compare it to a G1 that had like 50 megabytes for a few apps. 
So that's about it. That's a quick look at the uh, T-Mobile G2. I will spend a couple more weeks with this device uh, before I have to send it back. And boy, I got to tell you, the first impressions were I pulled this out of the box, I put it in my hand, and I was just like, wow, I'm going to the store to buy one of these today because it just feels fantastic. I mean, the hardware, top notch. I mean, cool design elements, feels great in your hand. It is kind of heavy. I kind of like I like that in my phone. It kind of lets me know that, hey, you have a nice uh, piece of gear here that you paid good money for. And uh, overall, it's just a real good device. Uh, one of the top Android devices, I would say. A couple things I plan on checking out is some of the media capabilities of it, um, the reception, uh, and the HSPA Plus speed, since I am in an area that does support uh, HSPA Plus. Oh, yeah, so there you go. You can see I almost forgot. It has swipe built into it, which is a fantastic keyboard alternative if you're not going to use the hardware keyboard. So thanks for watching, everybody. See you next time.